Hi there, welcome back to the uh, CISSP Twister of the day, number 142. I brought up a very interesting topic for you today, that is your uh, single sign-on. And in single sign-on, one of the topic which troubles all CISSP participants is, uh, you know, how does Kerberos works? And based on that, we have our question today. So do not uh, miss out this entire explanation is going to be very, very important. So let me take you uh, to this particular twister, right? It is from objective number 5.2. As part of this one, the question is there on your screen. Feel free to pause this particular video uh, for a minute, answer this, and then I will explain after 10 seconds. Amazing. I feel by now you might have answered, uh, find out the right answer. If not, feel free to pause it again, find the right answer first and then I am going to explain this. Right. So let's now start with this particular question. Kerberos is in use in your organization for providing SSO services. Wonderful. That is what you know Kerberos is so popular with. When a user needs to gain access to a resource over the network, what is sent to the ticket granting server by the user. Uh, interesting story and if you do not know how the entire Kerberos works, uh, you are going to lose the marks here. So let's see uh, what is in there uh, with this. I have a very good diagram also uh, which I will present th this to you. Uh, however, let's try to understand a little bit more about Kerberos first, then we will dive into this particular diagram. So what is Kerberos? So Kerberos is a authentication protocol and you can also say it's an authorization protocol as well, which helps you uh, to enable SSO services within a particular, mostly in a Windows kind of environment, where when you go to the office in the morning, you try to authenticate yourself, you get login to the Active Directory. Now this Active Directory is what called as KDC. It has certain components in this. Number one component, is your uh, authentication server which is responsible for authenticating you there is a database for all the users and their keys uh, the kdc is the only one in the entire environment which should be holding all the keys of the environment so it's a kind of jackpot if somebody gets it it's a jackpot there is a golden ticket attack also which happens now the third important thing as part of your kdc is the ticket granting service or you can say ticket granting server which is responsible for granting tickets all the time right now what are the other parties here other parties is you because you want to access a service so you become the principal you become the subject or the principal then end of the day you want to access a service let's say you want to access a payroll service then that particular payroll service uh, becomes a uh, you can say resource for you uh, you can call it as a resource party, you can call it as a service provider, whatever you want to call it, right? These are the three major components of your entire Kerberos environment. Now, Kerberos is currently into version 5, uh, right? And one key thing which you must remember from the exam perspective, in Kerberos, the, uh, you know, password never travels. The password is never traveling on the wire. So, that way we are much more secure. Other important concept from the exam perspective is Kerberos use symmetric key uh, all the time. It never use asymmetric. So sometimes you may be tested on that. With that said, let's go ahead and talk about uh, this particular diagram. So you can see you are the client here and this is the server you want to access uh, and this is the KDC, right? Who is responsible for all authentication and everything. Now, before we get into this, number one, when you go uh, to your corporate, uh, that time you provide your username, password. It does not mean that your password is now traveling on the wire. Your password will be used to encrypt a preset kind of, uh, some kind of random text. You are going to encrypt it and that is sent along with the username to the KDC. KDC will pick up your username because that is there in plain text. 
as per that it will go through its directory find out the key associated with you it will use that key to decrypt that particular message which you have sent if it is encrypted successfully that means authentication is good the end user is good and based on that then the authentication server will direct you towards the ticket granting server ticket granting server will give you two keys here one is the session key so that you can be there in the environment for let's say next eight hours as per the configuration the another most important thing and which is the focus here is called as tgt ticket granting ticket so this ticket granting ticket is a pass for you to access any service in the environment so let's say after some time you want to access the payroll services the rule here is you cannot directly go to the payroll services the moment you go to the payroll services they are going to uh, route you back to the kdc and once you go back to the kdc you have to provide your tgt ticket granting ticket okay once you provide your tgt the system will validate if this is a valid tgt and if this is a valid tgt the system is going to provide you a service ticket or you can also call it as a client to service ticket <coughs> this particular ticket is now encrypted with the server password it's not encrypted with your password as a client so when the ticket comes to you you can't really open it also you have to just use it as it is and send it to the server or maybe whatever resource you want to access you are going to send it to that because the server holds the key it's the private key which it holds right it becomes super simple for server to decrypt it and if it is decrypted well that's a indirect indication also for the server that this is a authentic uh, source from where the authentication has happened that means the particular message is indirectly coming from kdc this particular concept of indirectly validating something is also called as uh, uh, zero knowledge proof where you don't have a direct expression for something but indirectly you come to know that this thing has happened right once the server is able to decrypt it based on the request it is going to allow you to use that particular service and then we start using the service so coming back on the question now i think now it should be super simple for you um, because the question is asking you what is sent to the ticket granting server when a user need to gain access to a resource let's say you want to access a particular server what you will be sending so the right answer is with that explanation clearly it is ticket granting ticket a service ticket is for the uh, server to make sure that what who is requesting you for some kind of service they are coming after the proper authentication from kdc that's the service ticket a tgs is not a ticket it's a server it's a service which is there with the kdc so it's at all out and the last one is session key a session key is just to make sure when you morning in the morning get authenticated you can stay with your laptop in the same domain for a certain period of time <coughs> sorry about that i hope you understood the entire concept and uh, you know you are good with this particular topic uh, if you like this particular content feel free to like and share and um, also recommend to others also to see this those preparing for CISSP, CSUM, CISA exam, it is going to be a wonderful thing for them uh, to understand the entire thing. If you like uh, this entire thing, the way I explain and you want to get certified under my mentorship, you can visit cybernos.com. Uh, the contact also is there in the description. You can connect with us. We, uh, we run a 100 days program. Uh, you can be part of it and you can pass your CISSP within 100 days. Believe me. It's the worst world best program to help you pass CISSP. It's not a boot camp. It's an end-to-end -end CISSP preparation, which makes you to pass CISSP in 100 days. There's a lot of success story on LinkedIn. If you want to see that, please go and refer that particular playlist uh, from this particular YouTube channel. You will get to know a lot to hear about us from our successful candidates. We have, you know, uh, worked on hundreds of candidates to help them uh, pass their CISSP. With that said, sir, Jahind, and I'm going to meet you in my next video.